back in the day, and not my day or our day or any generation younger than myself, of course, which I'm already quite old, but in my father's day or my grandparents' day, molasses used to be the end-all, end-all of terpene boosting and giving great volume and structure to your buds and getting larger, Of even though a, a brilliant man at the World's Fair created Super Thrive and found that kelp actually did better for bud swelling and terpene booster a long time ago. But it still didn't stop the use of molasses for a long time and molasses, unsulfured of course, was always the go-to. Nowadays, stay away. In fact, to be honest with you, when I first started out as a caregiver in 2012 in the state of Colorado and I was growing my cannabis for, for medical patients and everything way before recreational passed in 2015, um, I myself even used molasses for a little bit. I did. But then I started, but then I quickly realized that molasses is a bad choice. And it was something that I would never use. Now, don't get me wrong, Fox Farm has released this brew stuff that is the exact same thing as their kangaroo drench, only it's a dollar more. It has a little bit more of what the exact same thing is in the root drench, but it also has molasses. When speaking to the rep of Fox Farm, he said that that was their terpene booster, and then that's what he was going to use use for that. First off, let's let's put this to bed because I have used every single terpene booster under the sun and there is no substitute and nothing better in this world to make your buds more potent than Snowstorm Ultra from Humboldt County Zone. The only accepts, exceptions would be Crystal Burst from Humboldt County Zone or Purple Max from Humboldt County Zone. And it does help the purple, it really does. But we all know through science and through my videos and what I'll show you guys in the end that the best way to get your colors and purples is direct blasting with CO2, which we'll get to that in a later video. But in this video, I want to talk about molasses. Stop using it. I mean, there's so many better things out there for making your buds bigger that aren't going to cause detrimental problems that molasses causes. Like bat guano you know, which is impossible to find right now. In fact, I'll be switching to azomite and a few other things to recharge my soil, even though I have a bag of covered in guano left, which is impossible to find. But the guano company still seems to have production with their back guano teas. Their blood swell, phenomenal product. But at the end of the day, it's all about results and what really works. And someone like me with over 10 years of experience in licensed commercial cannabis farming and personal farming way before that, not admission to guilt or anything, but what I've learned and what I know works are these few things. But I would like to really just touch on this video and try and make it fast, which is kind of difficult for someone like me who's, for all of you who see my videos, you know I kind of go. So I'm gonna try and do this as fast as possible and explain this, but, in this video, I wanna talk about why not to use molasses. Step one, for first thing, molasses is a raw, unfined sugar, especially unsulfured. You don't want sulfur in there. So we're only talking about unsulfured molasses. I probably should have lived with that, I apologize. Um, but it's it's raw sugar. Now, molasses is, is, is great if you're you know, breeding EMs and bacteria and doing a bokashi or a compost. It's outstanding for that. But when you have a living plant and things like that, what molasses does negatively, overwhelmingly outweighs the positive. One, it rots in your soil. When you start using molasses, even though if you use a, you know, a few milliliters for five gallons or 55 gallons or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's gonna get to the soil. It'll feed some bacterias that are beneficial, but it'll feed a lot of negative bacterias like sopoporic funguses, which are used to break things down and do that, but it rots. Within the first few days of after watering with just one time with molasses, you're gonna get a smell, a stink, a rot. It's gonna be horrible. It's gonna put bacteria in the air, which is gonna increase your chance of brutosis. It's going to drown your roots, roots out and rot them. It's gonna give you what's known as black root which means it's gonna lock out. The plants are gonna, that's where they take their, a lot of their nutrition up. So it's gonna lock them out. No matter how much pH adjusting, no matter how much flushing you do, it will not get the molasses out of the soil. The soil will have to be cooked. 
i.e. a compost. It will have to be composted in order to be reusable, which at that point with the molasses, it'll be perfect. You know, it's a lot like taking wet fish and burying them in the dirt. The fish are gonna get covered with sapophoric funguses. They're gonna rot, they're gonna mold, they're gonna degrade before they then turn to nutrition. Even the Native Americans when teaching the pilgrims knew that you dried the fish out completely like I do. I like to shred mine and make a hydroslate out of it, but you know, you dry it and then you amend the soil with it. You use it as a soil there. They would bury whole fish as long as they were dried because then it would break down. It's just something about the principles of, you know, quick composting and things like that that break down. But not with molasses. It's gonna, it's gonna kill your roots. And even though it is unsulfured, molasses in a lot of ways has some acidity to it. It's a very raw sugar. It's still quite a bit acidic. Um, that will also, you know, raise pH to an undesirable level and it will hurt it, which I know what you're saying. Cool, wait a minute. Molasses is sugar. Sugar neutralizes acids. Wouldn't it just base it out? So if you're using an abundance of molasses, yes. It will base out your soil. You won't be able to change the pH of it very easily. And once again, that's gonna damage your roots. So what we have here is immediate stink, rot, root, root rot. We have, we have basing the pH, if anything, unless of course it hits the roots in a concentrated manner, in which case the acid will kind of hurt it. And then we have the bacteria in the air which is gonna, you know, in a closed system and everything with indoor, it's gonna create brytosis. Using it in an outdoor, not so much. But the one thing, the one major reason why I say stay away from molasses for both indoor and outdoor cultivation and growing is pests. Pests love sugar. They love molasses. Fungus gnats, spider mites, not, well, spider mites, yes. Um, quite a few others, they're gonna go for that sugar. And when that sugar is heavily concentrated in the plants in that raw form, they're gonna attack the plants too. They're gonna get everywhere. Aphids are gonna love it all that much more. They really truly are. Um, molasses is just basically, you, you know, you never, you never invite a vampire into your house, right? Cause then they could always come in and it can eat you. It's like that times a thousand. You're inviting an entire coven of, va of, of, of plant juice sucking vampires to come into your grow, to bring their diseases, to bring their pests, to be in their infestation into your plant, all by simply watering with molasses. I don't care if you're in a closed laboratory system or not, nature always, always, always finds a way. So the number one reason why I just don't flat out use molasses is because of pests it's just not worth it. There's so many better other methods and ways and things. Um, you know, for instance, go to GNC, get medical grade vitamin B12 and B1 and all that. That's what I used to do to make my buds super large and crystally. But now Fox Farm has like a triple little thing. One of them's Beastie Blooms is the last one. You can buy all three of those and spend, you know, $60, $80 for all that and do that, those work. Or you can buy one product from Humboldt County Zone once again, and it's called Sonic Bloom. It is, it, it, to me, it's the magical fairy dust that's, that, that, that creates amazingness. I cannot begin to tell you. Um, here's your Beastie Blooms. Here's your Sonic Bloom from Humboldt County Zone. Oh yeah, and um, just, to, just to show you so I ain't blowing smoke up ya, <laughs> smoke. Here's the jar of Beastie Blooms. Cool, whatever. Here's my giant bag of Sonic Bloom. And of course, because it's Humboldt County Zone, you're gonna get mega results and mega things. I mean, look, I buy this stuff by the big case. I will use Sonic Bloom. I mean, I will use Snowstorm Ultra. I mean, it makes these cookies hard. It's just, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. It really is. So yeah, I'm testing everything and I'm tested all the other products and the new products that come out. I go to the conventions, I do the stuff, I do the homework so you guys don't have to financially commit to that homework and do that. So please trust me, I've been doing this an extremely long time and this is what you want, you guys.
So anyways, now that I'm seeing an abundance of hair change and everything, we're gonna start flushing. I'll go about flushing. Um, of course, I'm gonna use a Fox Farm product. Not, Fox Farm's not bad. I just, I, I'm, against the, I'm against the garden brew, I admit it. Maybe for your lawn or something else, like your yard. Your yard loves base, grass loves base. Use it in the lawn. Kelp, of course, kelp with anything in the lawn. However, I wouldn't use a liquid kelp from there, Kelp Me Kelp You. I would just go, there's a company and I can't remember who, but dried kelp already, you know, milled and dried kelp, that's the best way to go. It's not only water soluble, but you can top dress it and you can use it in your yard to help revive your grass and get that moisture retention, which we're gonna need in the later days of summer. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I'm gonna do my turf and everything at my house this year. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna do more than just cannabis for once. I'm very excited for that. But then another really super helper helper for us that's making these buds big and that's really saving the day, especially with this crop over here, which don't get me wrong, a lot of this is heat stress, even though they're now starting to thicken in bud because I'm giving them sonic bloom. But it's the potatoes. Oh yeah, I know. It's crazy. How could one plant create a, make another plant so much better? It's because they work together. They're friends. The potatoes are aerating the soil. They're, they're putting more seed. They're giving me, they're providing me with food. And they're shoving a lot of phosphorus and potassium into the soil, which is bud, bud biggin. It's awesome. It really works together. So I'm gonna conclude right now and just say, please, when you're walking down the baking aisle and you see grandma's or some great black strap and you're like, oh, you know, and oh, it only costs this and this and this. It's a cheap fix that's gonna cause an even greater and more expensive problem. So just say no to the molasses and focus more on what's out there that will work and the ingredients and do that. And don't invite unwanted guests and house pets. This is Cole and I hope to see you all on my channel soon. Bye.